Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. This is the Clutter Fairy Weekly for May 23rd, 2023. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, certified professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is the webcast and podcast that digs deep into the clutter that piles up between you and the life that you want to be living. We explore the habits and behaviors that lead to clutter, and we suggest strategies to slow the accumulation, reduce the collection, and comfortably manage the stuff we decide to keep. If you're new to our Zoom meeting, we want to let you know that you can share your comments and questions via the chat feature, and I'll try to make sure Gail gets to them before we move on to another topic. <clears throat> you can also use the raise hand feature if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question yourself via audio or video. And we are also streaming the webcast live on Facebook. So you can share your questions and comments there and I'll relay them to Gail. <clears throat> We're gonna start by recapping last week's weekly tittle, which was called One from the Vaults. The assignment was to evaluate an item that came to you from your family to decide whether or not you really wanna hold on to it. Let's hear from our participants in Zoom and on Facebook. Who took a hard look at an heirloom or family memento this week? Please let us know in the comments. We got a nice tittle report from Linda who, who left it as a comment on last week's show notes on the website. Linda writes, after years of confusion about what to do with family keepsakes, I followed the Clutter Fairy's advice and tried to approach these sentimental items with a more practical mindset in the hopes of coming up with some guidelines for what I would keep. I decided that for most people and important events in my life, Photographs were my favorite keepsake, and so I spent some time editing the photos down to a reasonable number, digitized them, and sorted them into digital albums on my iPad. It is very enjoyable look through them, to look through them now and easy to share them with others. I then realized that for some very special people in my life, I enjoyed having a physical memento in addition to the photos. I decided that size matters, so the item would need to be small and that it needed to be either in use or on display, not stored away. Mm. I took inventory and realized that for the people I had in mind, I already had, already had an item or two in use or on display. I pulled out the boxes of stored keepsakes, which were clearly not my favorites, took a few photos of things, and then let that stuff go. How fabulous that Linda spent some time reflecting on what makes her happy to look at and to reminisce over. And she got really clear on what she likes and what works for her. And then she used those guidelines she created for herself to reduce her collections of photos and keepsakes to something that's more manageable and, and enjoyable volume that she can keep up with. The last step was to pull those, pull out those things that didn't make the cut and letting them go what a relief that must feel like now. Linda, great job on managing your keepsakes and leaving years of confusion about what to do behind for instead having a curated collection that you can enjoy and that you can share with others. I really think that you did a fabulous job here and what a great example for our uh, viewers. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, it, um, it struck me too that she sort of took our advice about uh, you know, coming up with her own algorithm. Mm -hmm. So her thing is, a fo you know, photographs for most people, and then for very, are best. <laughs> and for very special people, little little something else, right? Which is great. That's a that's a that's a set of guidelines she'll be able to maintain. It's very sustainable, and it's and it creates a, a manageable collection. It's. It, she did. She said she did digitized it all, so the photographs are online, basically for her, so she can. I'm sure she carry them around on the phone or whatever she wants, and she doesn't have to worry about losing them. And I think it's you know how great to feel like she sort of created her own photo book of stuff that she wanted to look at, and that means she can go look at them, and it's easy, and she and it she gets she derives comfort from them, which is the whole point of having keepsakes to begin with, is so that. It reminds you of good things that happen and you have the experience of um, remembering good times and remembering people that you care about. And that's the whole point of having keepsakes at all. And so she created it in such a way that she can interact with it and enjoy it. And how great. And it's portable and movable. If she has to move, she's not moving 47 boxes of inherited leftover stuff. She's 
taking a very um, carefully curated collection with her and it's going to be a lot easier to pack for sure. Um, Paula says, as usual, I ignored the tittle and went off in another direction. <laughs> there's a there's a bag by the door to go off to the thrift store this afternoon. Yay! No penalty for picking your own tittle. There is no nope, penalty there at never all. Is. There's never a penalty for that. You'd got something else done, and that is the whole point. So good for you. I'm glad you got it done. So we were we had some conversation in the chat before the before we started recording uh, um uh, about um whether there's such a thing as too much decluttering oh yeah, yeah. i came into the middle of that conversation didn't yeah I? and and I, I thought it was kind of interesting um you're talking we're talking about whether for some people it is you know there's a sort of a compulsive and maybe not well thought out tendency to get rid of too much now you probably don't encounter this in your work right those <laughs> those people do not end up as your clients but you know who does end up as my clients the people whose parents decluttered their stuff while they weren't present as children right so i end up with the people who react to being the result of that because they felt traumatized by having things disappear that were theirs and without their permission and as a result, they, as adults, they end up over collecting in, re, in reaction. Yeah. And so I end up with those people as clients instead. I end up with the traumatized people who lived with those people. That's what I, those are who my clients are. Yeah. <laughs> Susie says, I used to go to a fast food place where the employee threw all the newspapers people left away. I gave up leaving the paper for other people to read and just took it to a recycling bin on the way home. <laughs> yeah, better solution, right? <laughs> and and M said, I I also know people who just throw away everything, then call themselves minimalists. I don't think that is minimal minimalism because all they're really doing is filling up the landfill. I, I think, you know, I have often said people have two stress responses to um, being um, with too much clutter and overwhelm. And one of those responses is to keep everything because they're frozen and they can't make decisions. And the other response is to throw everything to get it out of their face. So it's a completely emotional response to being overwhelmed. There's too much in this space. I'm overstimulated. I'm overwhelmed with how many decisions there are. I can't face dealing with this and it's making me crazy. And my shortcut stress response is to throw it all out to get it out of there. And there, either of those choices, keeping it all and being frozen or throwing it all out of stress are both not. Um, too, they're too extreme. They're very extreme and they're not, there's no thought involved in them. It's all a emotional response. And so those people that throw everything out in a panic or in a overwhelm, they're dealing with overwhelm by throwing it all out and probably getting angry while they're throwing it out. Like there seems to be an anger component sometimes that goes with that. Um, they're still, they still have to suffer from the results of that because they didn't get to make any thoughtful decisions. They didn't um, give themselves the time to make good choices. And so either either response results in a bad outcome and the people that throw things away end up throwing things away that are important or they throw away checks money valuables that they don't know are in there because they're in in their panic to throw it all they just throw stuff out without looking or um you know they they end up throwing something away that they actually needed a form the document the <laughs> you know, the part to the TV, whatever, they end up throwing stuff away that they need. And so um, neither response, it, re it reduces anxiety in the moment, but it, but it creates its own problems. And so the person that throws away just has a different set of problems. They have things missing that they need later, or, you know, they make their children sad because they threw away their favorite toy without asking. So yeah. either way, bad outcome. CJ says the principles of minimalism are more about what's consumed and what is in your life. 
the minimum of what's necessary to function and make you happy. However, most people need to greatly downsize uh, and uh, to get to that point. So mm -hmm. the idea that it's all about throwing everything away has overshadowed the original idea. Right. And, and minimalism also comes with thoughtfulness, right? Yeah. You're making thoughtful choices about what you actually need in order to live and function comfortably, happily, you know, and deciding I only need these certain things in order to make meals or get dressed or whatever. And I don't have to have a million options. And so there is a great evaluative and thoughtfulness component to setting up what you minimally will live with <clears throat> and throwing things out throwing it all out without thinking is not part of that process. Right. So, right. Yeah. That's hundred percent true. Kara has coined the, the, the new, um, initialism p-y-o-t pick your own tittle oh <laughs> and she says that for awesome. her for her p-y-o-t she let go of a rolled up 10 by 14 rug that's been in her garage for three years oh excellent because god only knows what's living in that rug now well Thank you. <laughs> somebody paid somebody on facebook marketplace paid 25 dollars to find out what's living in that rug yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take it away oh my god oh my god that's so funny yeah like you know i've said many times um things go into the garage to die and it, you know, had it out there for three years dying and somebody took it away okay so they get to revive it and it, clean it and whatever they're going to do and it's not dying in your garage so good for you and glad you made 25 dollars on it bonus t-y-o-t <laughs> i love that CJ reports, I'm the one that a few weeks back hosted a last minute guest that caused all the junk room items to end up in the oh, to come areas out. Yes, in, order yes, to yes. in order to create a guest room. Well, this week I was able to successfully clear the whole entryway area without a single item going back into the guest oh. room, which no longer identifies itself as a junk room. Yay. That so awesome. Way that to make, thing went back. That's way to so, make lemonade. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a great example of I really don't need to deal with this. I don't really need to have this stuff. I just need to take the time to move it. So I would send flowers to your guest who made you <laughs> as a thank this, you. You're right. And like right. it made you do the work to make it happen. And how fabulous for you. That is congratulations. Nothing went back. That is amazing. That's amazing. Jenny, who's with us on Facebook, says, my husband and I are each type. He throws things away without really looking at it, and I just freeze. Right? Yeah. So um, I bet y'all have an um, argument about it a lot. <laughs> and he's mad that you won't throw things away, and you're mad that he threw it away. So, yeah, that requires a whole lot of negotiation, right? And And recognizing that you guys both are just reacting to being overwhelmed and so uh, there's a better way and you have to consciously choose the better way or else you'll keep making him mad and he'll keep making you mad <laughs> it's for, part of how you got to learn to live together right okay one more report tammy says i got rid of boxes in my room i saved for just in case <laughs> Yay. Excellent. We love to collect boxes. We love small boxes. We love big boxes. There's just something about a box, man. It just seems so important. But if you get you know buried in boxes, you're not really helping yourself. So good for you for making some more room in your house. I'm proud of you. Good job. Okay, let's get on to our main topic. Okay. <laughs> According to a March report from Forbes, 49% of Americans plan to travel more in 2023 than they did last year. Travel is also expected to increase within Europe and the UK. But if you're not careful, the hard work that travel entails can cut into the fun. Today, Gail is going to suggest tips for planning, packing, and preparing for a lower stress vacation travel. A couple of weeks ago, I went on a trip with my beady chick friends, and we headed out west to see another beady chick friend. <laughs> Most of my friends are morning people and the flight out West left very early in the morning for me. Anyway, it left at eight 30. That meant I was picked up at six 15 
And you know how painful that was for me? It was very, very painful. I'm never willing to see 6.15 a.m., much less 5 a.m. when the alarm went off. Three confessions here. I did not completely follow my own advice for this trip. And as a result, I was finishing up packing at 2 a.m. So I got three hours of sleep that night. And what a misery that made my day. (laughs) It just reminded me very directly who suffers if I don't handle my business in a better manner. So I was wiped out for the whole first day and that is no fun at all. So do as I say, not as I do (laughs) and have a better trip because of it. I still managed to have fun, but I was exhausted the whole first day and man, I was regretting being packing at 2 a.m. that time. The thing about a trip is you can start getting ready to go as far in advance as you like. If you find travel is anxiety producing or you overpack because you're in a hurry or you can't decide what to wear at the last minute, or you have to pack for several family members, then consider your trip starting two weeks out and begin taking steps to prepare for the journey. It doesn't mean you should pack everything but the kitchen sink in, because you've got the two weeks. Instead, it gives you time to be thorough and to make thoughtful decisions about what you need to take. You know, I'm reminded of... Um... I I don't remember who the who the waggish writer was who said uh, I I would have written you a shorter letter but I didn't have time. <laughs> you know, I would have I would have packed a more reasonable amount of stuff for this trip but I didn't have time. Have time. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, <laughs> you should begin 2 weeks before. Um if you want new outfits for the trip or you need a new swimsuit or you need a, n- a new pair of sunglasses, It's time to go shopping. And whether you do that in person or online, you need time to find something that works. And you know you don't strike gold the first try. So you need a few days to get what you need. And you can't be packing and shopping at the same time. So it's better to get it done early, which is why I'm saying start two weeks out. Um, No later than a week before, you should be getting your laundry done. All the clothes that you're currently wearing are in the laundry hamper right now. So... um, You want to wash the clothes the weekend before the trip so that all of your favorite clothes are clean and they're ready to choose from when you start packing. Starting laundry the night before um, that you not the night before that you go is a guaranteed way to make sure that you lose sleep. So it's better to do it early. And if you have to do three loads of laundry to do the blacks and the whites and the cold water and the hot water and You know, you, you've got to do a few loads to get through everything that you need and still end up with all of your choices at the end. So do that on the weekend before and get it out of the way. You definitely can't do it the night before. I'm just telling you for a trip that's longer than a weekend, you're going to need to plan for several days worth of clothes and uh, the jewelry, toiletries, your medications and entertainment. And that's a lot to work out in a feverish night before you leave. As I found out myself. In theory, you can pack something every night for a week and calmly get it all done the day before. So if you get the toiletries together one night, the medications um, packed up the next night, the outfits after that, then come back and do shoes and accessories, you can spread it out over several days and still be not packing for three hours in a row and still being thoughtful about your choices. You're just spreading the workout over a longer period of time and it makes it easier for you to stay calm while you're doing it don't forget to check the weather on a weather app for the uh, for the trip the days of the trip so you know you're packing the clothes for the conditions at your destination you don't want to get there with all short sleeves and find out that it's going to be the cold front came through and you're going to be freezing and you should have brought a jacket so or vice versa you bring cold weather thinking it's going to be cold and it turns out to be warm so Um, Make sure you check the app for your location and find out what it looks like. If you want to stage your packing over several days, like I've suggested, then you're going to need a packing zone, a place to put your stuff. So get your suitcase out and get it open somewhere on the floor or on a table. um, And then add things to the suitcase as you get them worked out. After you figure out that's going to go, you can go put it in the suitcase. It's sitting out there. If you find something in the house that you want to remember to take, Go park it in the zone until you're ready to pack it. And sometimes we walk through the house and go, oh yeah, I need to remember to put that in the luggage. Well, you just pick it up and go stick it in the parking zone. Um, and I, one caveat I will add, 
if you have pets and you're packing, they will probably try to sleep in your luggage. So <laughs> if that's true and you don't really want to take a bunch of cat hair or dog hair with you, um, you might just find a, a, a throw blanket or a, a towel or a yeah. sheet that you can just throw over the luggage while you're staging it. So you can peel it back when you're going to spend your half an hour working on your medications and packing it and getting it in the luggage. And then you can throw the sheet back on top of it again. So the cat can come and sleep on it for the week. And then you'll be able to pack it up and uh, throw the sheet out into the laundry on the way out the door. Right. Um, you can make your own uh, packing checklist. Lots of people do, or you can go get one off the internet. There's like 4 million gazillion options of how to pack, what kinds of trips to pack for, try to remember everything. And everybody's published a tra uh, traveling uh, checklist. So if you don't want to have to figure it out yourself, go find one on the internet and print it. It may not all apply to you, but it'll certainly give you ideas of things to remember. And you'll be able to make sure you catch all the essentials. And M then you won't have to stress about the list. M mentioned that her mother kept a packing list in her suitcase. Right. And she said she probably had different lists for each type of trip. The first trip was hard to pack for, but after that, packing was a snap. Right. And um, <clears throat> Connie mentioned, if I find out that I haven't packed something I needed, it goes onto the list, the, the running list. You know, On the, the checklist, the right. ongoing list. And if I haven't, it gets crossed off after the third trip. If you keep bringing something that you don't use, then that stop would be, it. <laughs> you know, that would be like the electric shaver for me. You know? Oh, you always like, bring the electric yeah. shaver. <laughs> well, no, I I think I pretty much crossed that one off already. You broke broke the habit now. Yeah, it's good. I mean, sometimes we think, oh, I'm going to need that. That's going to be so useful, and then you realize, no, I'm not going to bother with it. It's never going to work for me. I I don't care. I mean, you don't want to pack your stuff with oh, this might be useful, this, oh, I could, I might, I, let's add, no, you're going to go and have fun. You're not going to worry about what's in your luggage. So um, editing that list at the end of a trip, going back in, like she said, and crossing off things that didn't get used, adding on things that you really wish you had. What a great way to keep it fresh and to learn from your mistakes and to learn from your experience and have it be, you know, have it be reflecting your cumulative experience on trips. Great idea. Bridget says, before you get back to the mm. presentation, Bridget says, we're on a holiday right now. Ooh. Since since I used the 333 project, it was much easier to pack the right things. I tried to pack less, but did not yet trust it will be enough. I found out that it really was enough. 40% not worn yet. So I'll do even better next time. Excellent. See, you just got to, you know, you got to try it and have the experience and then learn from your experience. So Great. And you made a first attempt and now you're going to revise having had your experience out in the, out on the trip. So hope you're having fun. <laughs> Wish we were there. Okay. She, she said earlier where she was, but I can't, I can't remember. Mm. All right. We'll just dream of someplace fabulous. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's talk about planning the actual contents that you're going to pack. You want to plan your packing based on where you're going, for how long, and what resources will be available. For example, uh, will you stay long enough to need to do the laundry? Will there be a laundry room? Are you, if you're staying with a friend, they have a laundry room. Um, if you're in a hotel, they have a laundry service. If you're somewhere, you know, you might be in an Airbnb and there might be a laundromat nearby or the, the Airbnb will have um, a washroom. So um, it means two things. First, there'll be laundry supplies there to buy. Or you can chance packing some in very small containers, but um, don't do that unless you just absolutely can't imagine being able to find stuff there, which would be, th those circumstances should be very slim. Second, you can pack less outfits if you think you'll have the chance to do laundry. So you can pack for part of your stay with a laundry break in the middle of the trip. You know, assume that you at some point stop and take all of your undergarments and your two pairs of shorts and your t-shirts and go wash them. And then you don't have to pack two weeks worth of clothes. You can pack one week's worth of clothes and assume you get to wash it and you get to wash the pajamas and the socks, <clears throat> make it so much easier. Um, will you have a place when you get there, will you have a place to store or hang clothes or will you be living out of your luggage? Um, and I asked that question because if you end up living out of the luggage, 
Um, you want to lean towards clothes that don't wrinkle really easily or that they don't need a lot of care in order for you to be able to wear them so that they can survive uh, being on the trip and staying folded or rolled up in the luggage and then being pulled out and put on without being without you feeling like you're too wrinkly. So <laughs> just consider um, what kind of storage you're going to have at the other end. Um, ask yourself, what kind of vacation is it? Are, are you going to be spending a bunch of nights in clubs? Are you going for days on the beach? Is it an amusement park? Are you touring Broadway shows? Are you going to a bunch of museums? Maybe you're hiking or you're doing a bunch of outdoor sports. Um, depending on the answers to those questions, it leads to this next question. How many outfits will you need every day and what kind? How secluded or remote is your destination? And how much access will you have to places to resupply um, if you run out of something? Will they have what you like or something that you can live with? Um, if, if you're visiting people in the United States in a, a regular sized city, you can probably get whatever you want at some store nearby. Um, if you're going on an, a trip in the Australian outback, you're going to have to uh, put more planning into what you're packing and making sure that you have enough of your must have supplies. But um, if you do go on some kind of out, outback trip, some kind of major hiking trip, then most likely that tour company is going to be giving you a huge list of things that you have to have in order to be on the trip. So um, don't worry about it too much. Let somebody tell you what they think is appropriate. Um, ask yourself, what are the things that you absolutely must take with you? And when you're packing, you can start with the must-have meds. Lots of people have to take their medications with them. And so making sure that you have all the medications that you need. Um, toiletries, you got to have toiletries. Electronics, everybody takes something. They take their reader. They take their phone. They take their digital camera. They take their laptop. They take their iPad, <laughs> whatever of those. So you got to prepare those electronics to go with you and to be charged and your travel documents. So I would worry about the meds, the toiletries, the electronics, and the travel documents first, and then go about the rest of your packing. Because some of those things, um, if you don't have what you need, it takes a little bit more to, to solve the problem. So working on those earlier rather than later is important. Um, make sure to refresh your toiletries, but you should also keep a permanent stock of travel size stuff in your toiletry bag. Instead of removing your home version of the product, uh, if you go and start grabbing, you know, 16 ounce bottles of things out of the shower and off the counter, there are things that you use all the time. You're just really adding a lot of weight and making it a problem when you have to unpack later. So you should have a travel size duplicate set of everything that you normally use and that that goes into the toiletry kit and stays there permanently. And then you don't have to unpack so much at the end of the trip either because you're not having to take all those big things out and put them all back. So I just keep a toiletry kit that's filled with the stuff that I want in small size and, and then I refresh it after a trip. Um, when you're choosing the clothes that you wanna take, stick with the color theme so that the clothing can do double duty and get used in more than one outfit. You can wear um, the same pair of pants three or four times, you can wear or shorts three or four times, trade out some shirts. <clears throat> I tend to wear an outfit that I wear traveling out and then I put it aside and turn around and travel in it going back at the end of the trip. So I just save it for both legs of the travel and, and don't try to pack two things. Consider the size of your purse. And remove anything that's not needed on the trip to lighten the weight. And you might even take a smaller purse for the trip. If you haven't cleaned your purse in a while, this is the perfect time and the perfect excuse to do it. Um, remove a bunch of extra credit cards. Get all the receipts out of there. You know there's a million receipts in there. The random makeup that you've added, uh, there's often you know, a whole bunch of lipsticks floating around the bottom, a bunch of loose change floating around the bottom. Get all that stuff out of the purse so that it is not super heavy when you carry it. Remove anything that's not absolutely necessary so that it's lighter. You're already dragging a piece of luggage, so you don't want your uh, purse to also weigh 50 pounds <laughs> when you go to check in. On the day that you check in, um, usually the 24 hours before when you have to check in for a plane, um, get all your travel documents in your phone for easy access. 
Um, you want to use an airline app on your phone and get your boarding pass downloaded to the phone, um, put it in your Apple wallet or the, the, the Android equivalent, and um, also get an email on the phone. Like you can usually get it sent to your email as well. So that if something goes wrong with the Apple wallet, you have an email backup, or if you prefer, you can just have a paper backup in your, in your carry on either way. If you're traveling in by car, of course, none of that matters, but you still, um, depending on where you're driving, you may still have to have some travel documents. Um, make sure that your driver's license is valid and easily accessed while you're in the airport. You're going to have to take it in and out a couple of times. And so having it not be buried in your purse, um, you just un uncover it for the, the going through the check-in part of the process and um, getting through um, security, walking through the security section, you got to have it there. And then after that, all thing, it's all good. So you can, when you're putting your shoes back on, you can also put your um, driver's license back in your wallet and be over with it for the, for the trip. And, and just remember that it's not a disaster if you forget something. You can most likely buy a substitute at a nearby store or you can do without it for a week or two. It won't ruin the fun if you forget your favorite earrings or your shampoo runs low. You might have to pay a premium for replacing something if you buy it from the hotel store or you can walk to a nearby Target instead. But truthfully, even if you just run out of something and you can't use it for a few days, the life is not over. It'll be okay. <laughs> you can just uh, you know consider it part of the trip and roll with it, right? <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me lastly for fun here's some packing don'ts <laughs> don't pick a million options for a trip you're there to have fun not spend hours getting dressed every day nothing weighs a suitcase down more than i pack two options for every day do you really want to roll around twice the weight you need on this trip why i mean i don't know about you but at my age when I go in the front of the airport and have to get all the way through everything and I'm still rolling my luggage and it's like, oh my God, that's just so annoying to drag luggage behind me. So A, I check my bags immediately because I don't want to carry it anymore. <laughs> like get it away from me. I don't want it. And um, if you are one of those people that rolls it down and then you have to like lift it over your head to put it in the overhead bin in the airplane, all the more reason for your, your luggage not to weigh too much. So be super careful about that. Don't pack the perfect pair of shoes for each outfit. <laughs> shoes take up a ton of room and they feel like you're carrying bricks in your luggage. So instead, pick a few pairs of shoes that will cover your needs and build the outfits that work with those shoes instead of the other way around. Be sure to include the shoes that you're traveling in as one of your options. You're going to have to wear a pair of shoes on the plane, right? So, or you're going to have to wear a pair of shoes in the car if you're driving. So um, that's one of your options and plan some outfits around that pair and then add a little bit more. Moms out there, you know you do this. Don't pack the entire medicine cabinet <laughs> just because you're traveling with kids. Don't try to anticipate every medical need your child might have on the trip. Some aspirin, some Tums, some sunscreen, and some aloe, and the rest is available at the drugstore or at the hotel. Or if it's bad enough at the hospital, you don't need a traveling pharmacy in a bag. That's just the truth. Moms tend to over um, overcompensate for that. Overprepare. Yes, they do. If you can go in luggage, let it. Don't overburden your carry-on bag. You don't need to be dragging, you know, 50 pounds onto the plane and trying to shove it you know, under the seat, stick it overhead. I know there's some, I don't want to lose my luggage on the trip. So I take it inside the plane with me, but I'm of the mind that it, it's worth the risk. So I don't have to struggle with the weight or whack people in the head while I'm trying to manage my carry on or walk around with all that behind me, the entire length of the airport. So if my luggage goes to Timbuktu, it'll catch up with me eventually. <laughs> it won't matter. And truthfully, uh, you know, if it's a direct flight, particularly if you've taken a direct flight, then forget about it. It's going on your plane and it's not going anywhere else. You might as well check that stuff. If your trip is a car trip, don't assume you can take a ton more stuff with you. <laughs> what a burden to load and unload the car. Use the same criteria to take it on a car trip as well. You don't want to unload 14 bags in a cooler when you arrive at your friend's driveway. How embarrassing to like have to get your friend to come and help you lug in 
a whole bunch of luggage just because you had the car and you could. I don't want to do that. And, and I don't it, want to manage with it or share my room with it. And an overstuffed car is kind of a target for thieves. Too. Right? Like you if know, you park at a hotel. Right. You, exactly. You, you ideally don't want to take more than you can easily take out of the car and put in your hotel room where it's safer right rather than leave anything in sight now if you have a great big trunk you can you might be able to get away with more a little bit more but still like why why do you have to do that it you know it's such a it's such a pain right yeah or if you're taking things for your family or whatever you better leave some stuff behind <laughs> you better not come back with the same amount you left with <laughs> well i it, you know i've known people who will bring you know four books for for the week at the beach and I just want to say, come on, that's really just about the fact that you couldn't make up your mind. Right. Make up your mind. Pick one. You're going to have to make up your mind when it's time to carry your book down to the beach. Right. Why not just <laughs> advance the process and make up your mind before we leave for the trip? Give it a shot. And if you pick the wrong book, too bad, read it anyway. Like you right. have it on your reading list because you want to read it. So just read it and not, and don't worry about it. Right. Right. If there's a lighter weight option, take that one. If you can take a small bottle or travel size or something, leave the full bottles at home. Anything that you're thinking of packing, if you look at it and you think this is the full size version, is there a smaller version? You want to aim for that smaller version, whatever it is. Remember that you're not moving there. You're just visiting for a minute. <laughs> you don't need to drag half the closet with you. If you're fine, if you find that your luggage is bursting, once you've done packing, then I think it's time to review the contents and see if you can put something back. Did you sneak an extra pair of shoes in there? <laughs> what about a full shampoo bottle? Did you bring those 12 books when four will do? Think of your back and subtract at the end and do the same check with your carry-on bag too. You, you don't want to be the person at the luggage drop-off where you weigh it and it's 53 pounds. And the first thing they say to you is, well, that um, extra three pounds is going to cost you $75 or you can remove things out of your luggage and put them in your carry-on to go with you. And so then you have to open your luggage and dig around and find things to shove into your carry-on, which is probably already stuff to begin with. And so then you're going to have the problem of, I can't make it fit in the carry-on. So make sure that it's not too overstuffed and you're not going to get caught with a fee at the end. Um, just think of it as your... Um, you're preventing a $75 charge on the back end by um, removing that extra pair of shoes out of your luggage. Okay, <laughs> that's my travel content for today. <laughs> we have lots of comments. Okay. Lisa, Lisa Beth says, we just came back from a weekend outing. I'm using it as the core wardrobe for a longer summer vacation. Mm. In the washer and put back in the luggage. Excellent. You just went on a trip, so it's already vetted. That's a great thing and pack it away. It'll be, you can, um, you know, wear the other things in your closet while these things are in the luggage waiting for the trip. Great idea. I love it. And then Su you can just add a little bit as you, you know, plan for the extra days. Susan says, I keep a universal packing list and only ever travel with carry on luggage unless I'm going somewhere for more than two weeks. Mm. If push comes to shove, you can usually buy or borrow clothes if you miss something. Right, if you suddenly are freezing to death or whatever, exactly. Because it will give your host or hostess endless pleasure to provide you with a coat because they have, you know, a bunch of coats in their coat closet that are getting used so they can find you something that'll work. And, you know, it'll just be part of the trip that you get to wear somebody else's jacket for a couple of days. When I traveled more as a younger person, I always traveled in blue jeans, you know, like that's what I would wear on the plane mm. because then if your luggage gets gets lost at least you have a pair of blue jeans and <laughs> at least you, you know, have pants on <laughs> when you're 20 something you can wear a pair of blue jeans for many days <laughs> many many days right before they urgently need washing <laughs> and you had that famous trip as a young person and you went to japan mm-hmm and lost, they lost the luggage? Yeah, my luggage arrived on about day five of a, an eight-day trip. Right. And so I'm sure you were wearing the same pair of jeans and, you know, rinsing yes. out your socks over I was and over. rinsing out stuff every night before bed. But you know what? 
that is not what I remember about that trip. You know, there right? were so many wonderful things about that trip and the, the mild inconvenience. Yeah, it was a big inconvenience at the time, but in retrospect, it was nothing, you know? Right? And, you know, part of the reason that you couldn't quite recover over there was because you're six feet four. Right. And there's not a lot of six feet four people in Japan. Right. <laughs> so there's not, there wasn't a lot of clothing options for you to recover there. Yeah. And there's like buy an extra t-shirt or something. Right. right. There's not, two, you can't just go to Target and <laughs> grab a 2X anything in Japan. Right, right, right. But, you know, if you had, if you had had this trip in the United States, you would have just gone to the local Target and bought a t-shirt, right? Like right. you would have been able to recover much easier if it was a domestic travel. And so the part of what it, part of the issue for you was that it was just, it was Japan. I mean, even if you'd been in London, you would have been able to recover. It was just Japan because you were too big for everyone there. Yeah, <laughs> You were just way too tall. <laughs> Connie says, I have a list for warm weather, one for cold and one for when traveling with a car mm. can be that's a little, good yeah because you um you, the specs are different right and so you can pick a different list good for you all lists which can live in the luggage until you know you need to pull one out to pack with it great idea i like it S samudra shared i have years of those lists for visiting parents for canoeing for camping i never go anywhere now <laughs> well you can share your list with your friends then Right. They need to come to you. It's their turn to come to you instead, Samudra. Um, <clears throat> Susie says, my mother always had a list of items to put in the travel trailer when we went on vacation. Some things like pots, pans, and dishes stayed in the trailer all the time. Mm. But linens might be washed and put in the trailer the week before the trip. Right, because you wanted to be fresh. Exactly. And, um, I, and, you know, packing a trailer is a slightly different it's it's different it requires more operation right so good for her that she started in advance and she had her you know set things that she would do before we had a we had a tent trailer when when i was in my early you were teen, little. early early to mid teen, well really through my teen years mm. and um yeah we had there was a set of stuff you know we had cheaper and lighter weight cookware and mm. uh utensils and things like that uh dish dish pan to wash thing the things in we did a lot of we did a lot of camping did you really with six kids <clears throat> yeah it's the only thing you can afford to do right <laughs> not really a great option right 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 it's true ellen That's says ever since a family death that had me scrambling to pack I keep an overnight bag with toiletries, nightwear, underwear, socks, extra charging cords, sweatshirt. If I need to leave in a hurry, I just need a few pairs of slacks and shirts. That's a great idea. That's excellent planning on your part. And you know, I did have that experience when my mother passed away and I got a call that she was hurt, that she was unwell. And I was at a client and I had to yeah, you run just home race for the airport just about. Yeah, I mean, I like I ran home and Penny was trying to pack stuff for me while I was trying to buy a ticket online. And, you know, I was just madly scrambling and she just threw stuff in a bag. And, you know, I was like, I, you don't have time in that moment to think about it. And I just, you know, went with what I ended up with. And, and it was the least of my problems on the other end, you know. Um, my mother had passed away by the time I got there. And so th then we were all just reacting to that. And um, you don't want to think that you have to grab and go in a hurry, but that was the one experience in my life where I literally had no idea that I was going on a trip. And then suddenly, you know, in the span of an hour, I was on the way to the airport. And, and that was, it was a very shocking experience, truly. It was uh, having a go bag like you just described that's just sitting there ready to go would have been great now I did have my toiletries were ready because I keep that ready and so that was easy for her to grab and so it was really just trying to figure out what clothes do I throw in here and yeah. get out the door with and but still <clears throat> if you're in any kind of hurry you know the house is on fire you can't grab stuff but 
people who are being evacuated on the West Coast for wildfires or landslides or, you know, you want to be able to grab and get out of the house in a hurry because your life is in danger. And so this would help you be prepared for that. I like the idea of it. It's good. Susan says, sometimes I take clothes that are worn out and leave them behind, can buy something new as a treat while I'm away, and there's room in the suitcase for them. I've heard other people say that, like they, they take their old underwear and then they throw it away. Right. <laughs> okay. I, and I guess the idea is that then you just, it gives you some place to throw out your underwear. <laughs> Well, I, I, <laughs> I don't quite understand like why it's better to throw it away on a trip than it is to throw it away at home, but whatever well, works I, for you. I think it's more about <clears throat> making, having that extra, having that extra space available. Maybe if you're, oh, some, okay, if okay. you're someone who likes clothing as souvenirs, you okay. know, if you're oh, traveling, yeah, okay. traveling somewhere where the clothes are really interesting or you're, you know, you have to have your Atlantic city t-shirt or hoodie or whatever from right every, right right from every kind of place that you go then it makes some that makes some sense you know then it's to, sort of like the one in one out um closet theory right if right if the luggage is your closet you're letting one thing go in order to bring in the souvenir thing that you're adding i get it okay i'm with you here we learned something that well that i didn't know about marsh marsh says i learned to pack as a fashion model Oh, wow. We, we learned from our agent how to pack a base case by rolling eight items only to match one color coordinated set with one evening dress and simple evening wear shoes. There you go. And you were ready to go, right? How awesome. Um, Connie says, I met a woman who would find out where the nearest secondhand shop was near her hotel and would buy clothes there. She was thin, so most things fit her. Oh, well, then she would fly with nothing and go shopping how fun <laughs> maybe, maybe not nothing because you don't really want secondhand underwear but right, right? <laughs> but but with much less right mm -hmm. well if you like to shop and you think buying at the secondhand store is a lot of fun wouldn't that be a great thing to do just go and get a bunch of stuff from out of town that doesn't have anything to do with where you live that'd be fun i don't know that i'm that brave but Jane, Jane says we took a trip to Alaska that started with a land tour and then a cruise because of the amount of time we did what Gail suggested and did laundry on the at sea days. It worked great and meant less to manage. I, That's I've, cool. I, when I've traveled for, you know, longer than, than, than a week, I usually make plans to have at least a couple work days here and there just to keep things moving along. Right. And, and the work day, you know, the, the work day is a great day to drop everything off at the fluff and fold. Right. <laughs> to go get would, laundry service. Yeah. I would drop the, you, I, I, a lot of places have, you know, places where you can go put the, put your laundry in yourself and then they, they finish it for you. And it, you, when you come back, it's all done and ready to go mm. and, you know, go put it in the washers at that, you know, the last time I was traveling extensively, there were still a lot of internet cafes. I don't even know if internet cafes are a thing anymore now that <laughs> everyone everybody has wireless or... their internet with them on their phone. Um, yeah. But, you know, go do some work in the internet cafe and go pick up my laundry. Yeah, that's a good plan. Let's are you ready see. for a tittle? Yeah, we probably better get to that. It's getting on toward right. that time. Okay, so this week's title is titled, Oh, the Places You'll Go. <laughs> this week's assignment is to make advanced preparations for your next trip or a special weekend of dedicated R&R. &R. Um, the first thing is to go into your toiletry bag and refresh it. That DOP kit that you have all of your um, toiletries in, go pull out all the contents and maybe you want to wash uh, or wipe out the bag. It's usually... Um, plastic or fabric and it can probably run through the wash or it can be put into the sink and swished around and scrubbed on and then uh, put out to dry in the sun it'll be just fine it's not going to hurt it if you get it wet most of the time um, it's intended to be durable right so it's probably going to survive any kind of cleaning that you do so you might as well pull the contents out and clean it um, refill the travel size bottles with the products that you like to use and if you've been packing the full size bottles then this is a good time to buy or create travel size containers of your favorites. 
check all your over-the-counter medications and prescriptions for expiration dates and restock uh, your fresh meds and take out anything that you can't identify. Because <laughs> sometimes we put uh, uh, some pills in a little Ziploc bag and throw it in the kit. And then, you know, six months later, we're like, what is this pill? I don't know. I don't know what this is. You don't want to be taking surprise medication. So you probably want to take it out and throw it out at this point and refresh, figure out a way to label this stuff better the next time. Um, you can also in advance prep, um, you can stage your packing area. So set up a small table or find the place where the luggage can lay open uh, waiting for you to pack it and go find the throw blanket or the sheet that you're going to drape over it to prevent the animals from getting your stuff all hairy. Um, see the luggage with a few things that you already know that you want to take with you, like the gifts that you've set aside for your family or the book that you plan to read on the trip. Now's the time to remember all the things you've set aside to give to the family. When you see them next, you need to get them into the luggage now. <laughs> so many of my clients buy things for family members that don't live in the city where they live on the theory that they're going to take them on the trip, and I'm using air quotes here, they're going to take it on the trip when they go see them next. And so they have a year's worth of shopping for their family that they've been stashing. And then they go on the trip and they don't take it with them. So if you're going to buy and stash things for your family, you need to go and get them out and get them in the luggage on the trip. That's what I'm saying. Either that or stop buying for them. If there's no travel on your horizon, then consider treating yourself to a staycation. You can make a shopping list of food and drinks or a list of restaurants that you want to order some delivery food from, get the games and movies or books that you're going to use for the keep the family entertained, and then pick a weekend to take off from your usual routines and enjoy a relaxing staycation. Um, I have never actually done that as a, as a thing, as a plan. So I'm going to have to try to do that sometime. I'm either doing my life or going out of town. And those seems to be the two options. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to have to plan a staycation soon. I hope you got some good tips out of this stuff today. And I hope that the tittle sort of uh, whets your appetite for a little travel this summer. You can join all the millions of people that are going to be running around this year. And, um, you know, you can either take a day trip in the car or um, make a short road trip over a weekend, or you can plan a big vacation and hit the airport and fly somewhere fabulous for two weeks, what, whatever it looks like for you, uh, give yourself a little R&R &R, and at, we will look forward to hearing about it. At least one person um, commented on, on YouTube, I think that um, it's, it's kind of hard to understand with the cost of things, how so many people are planning to travel. And the, the Forbes article, oh, I, I read only a summary of it. I the, didn't have access to the whole article, <clears throat> So there was no breakdown on whether how far people, you know, how far people are going, whether they're flying, driving, or some other some other other option. Well, like you said, you know, going out camping, going, you know, to stay in a tent at the beach, all that kind of stuff that happens. Yeah. So. Yeah. Marsh says, Ed, you'd be great in a kimono. And <laughs> it's true. It's true, and I have I have photographic evidence, but I don't have it uh, at my fingertips, so I can't share it right now. But there is a photo of me in a kimono. Oh, I can totally see that, but I, guess I loved my kimono. Uh, my, that it my... probably came to the top of your knees. You well, no, no, on. no. Actually, the friend the friend uh, I was visiting had somehow tracked down a kimono that was a appropriate size for a for six you? foot four. Yes, man. Oh, wow. And that's super cool. I wore the heck out of that kimono. I, you know, until I, I kept that kimono until I had worn it out completely. That's so awesome. Let's talk about next week. Okay. Clutter is more than just an annoyance or inconvenience. It can adversely affect our health and well-being in dozens of ways we might not even notice. In our next episode, we're going to discuss the impacts of clutter on our physical, emotional, and psychological health and the potential health benefits of clearer living spaces. Join us on May 30th, 2023 at noon U.S. Central Time. Um, I, don't have a I don't have a title yet, but it's going to be about clutter and health. Okay, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, there is a big impact uh, on our physical health and our mental well-being, as you all know. So we're going to talk about that very specifically. 
it's a big and important topic that we haven't mm -hmm. covered in as extensively as we could have. We talked about it in mostly in the context of aging, but there's a, there's a whole lot more to it than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're right. going to cover it. If you're watching this on YouTube, we would love for you to join us live <laughs> to get notifications about upcoming events. We invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by visiting cfhou.com slash Facebook or subscribe to our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We love to hear from you. So please send us your questions, comments, and topic suggestions on YouTube, Facebook, or anywhere that you find us. You can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We'll be back next week for uh, our next topic. And um, I hope to see you then. Hope you're having a good summer so far. Um, I do want to say that um, we'll be back next week, but the following week, June the 6th, um, I am going to be at a board meeting, a NAPO board meeting. And so we won't be doing the show that Tuesday. So we'll be back next week, but the following week, we're going to be off. All right. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.